Are, are we ready? Can we start now? We're ready. Welcome, everyone. I'm Kelly Osborne. And I'm Jeff Beecher. And this is the Kelly Osborne and Jeff Beecher Show. And we have, we have today one of my favorite people <laughs> in the entire pl- galaxy. <laughs> he needs no introduction. The man, the myth, the legend. He goes by the Wolf of Wall Street. I know him as my dear friend, Jordan Belford, everybody. Woo! Woo! The wolf is in the house. Okay, can we just tell everyone what you just did to us? (laughs) Absolutely. It had to happen. It wasn't my fault. (laughs) So Jeff and I have been going since really early this morning, and Jordan walks in, and he is like, no, no, Fire Jordan practice. walks Acting in. Weird. A couple <laughs> details I didn't tell you. So Jordan walks in late, and he also texts me. He's like, I'm with an old friend. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like, he texts me this shady, weird text. And I'm like, it sounded like he fell off the wagon. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then he comes in here. He's like, acting all weird. Weird. And then he's he goes into Red the Bulls. bathroom for like, I want to say, hey, that was a good 20 minutes you were in there, <laughs> I felt like. And I'm like looking at Jeff being, I'm mouthing to him, is he doing? <laughs> and like I didn't hear anything and then Jordan comes out and then he's like real intense like real intense like he's about to give me some like psych like pep talk <laughs> and he's about screaming he sits he like steps on all the cords and the mics go <laughs> off and he's sitting on, he's sitting three inches in front of us and talking in our faces and smiling. I'm like what is going on and this whole time I'm texting Jeff going oh my god he's high he's what high. they really didn't know though was I actually put I mean, Google before I got it, how do Hollywood actors pretend to snort coke and look like they're doing drugs? And they use a combination of inositol, which is vitamin B, and baby powder. Huh. So I had my team go out on the way that they bought baby powder, right? And I went to the bathroom, <laughs> I was putting baby powder on, and it's hard to do, by the way. I kept fucking I kept doing it like that, I kept going you on. You had like white shirt on your lip. I'm, I'm like, like, what the fuck like, is going on? Like, <laughs> this doesn't look authentic. I'm, I'm trying to remember, because I've been sober for like 22 years. I'm like, in the old days, what did it look like when I'd walk out and I'm coked? And, I mean, so I finally got it, just a little bit going down. I walked and I got right in there. You should have seen the look on their faces. It was like deer <laughs> in the headlines. It was like, no, oh I, my God. They seemed to be the best or worst podcast ever. Because like, I've mentioned he's that here. Like looking at Jeff and Jeff looking at me, like, and we were both having conversations with our eyes and not really saying anything. And I'm like, oh my god. I was more worried about myself getting triggered and going into drugs. <laughs> so, okay, next well, like, question. Leaving I have... here with Jordy and going to a drug dealer and be like, ah, I need exactly. some pills. Okay, yeah. here's here's the next question I have. Did the performance you just did make you feel like that butthole anxious wink? Because. For like when people yeah, yeah, do it. cocaine in front of me, I still get that. I don't get I me. Mean, listen, it's been I've been sober for since 1997, April 17th, right? So in the beginning, like the first couple of years, it did, but now no. But I, I will tell you this though: that when I, after I said, "Hey guys, it's a surprise, it's a joke," it took me <laughs> a couple of minutes to calm down because like I was acting so weird. I was like trying to act like like old, muscle weird. memory. I'm like, oh my god, I'm like hot. It's hot in here. I'm so you know, well, it's like Roddy Dangerfield. What's going on, right? You know, and then. <laughs> After I'm like, all right, time to I act swear. normal again, right? But I don't, I, to, I know what you mean though. There's a weird, when you see people do drugs when you first get sober, there's a sympathetic response. That mm-hmm. you, and it's actually a chemical thing where you see someone doing drugs. It's the same way when you actually would coke. The best time to do coke is when? Before, you, when you're cutting the lines up, is the most fun part of all. It's the anticipation. Jeff's like, no, it's not. <laughs> After I'm high as a kite cocaine. and running no, down Jeff. the street naked. No, and, no, Jeff thinks he's better than most comedians because he didn't do cocaine. Oh, all right. I've never tried cocaine. Really? Yeah, I mean, Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but like the, the most enticing aspect is when you're waiting, preparing, and that like that moment when you are about to snort and you snort and you get this rush and it's because your body anticipates the chemical high and releases the endorphins the same way. So that's what you get when you first sober. Now it's so many years, I don't get that anymore. I'm no longer like the dog when you say sit and the dog starts to you know, salivate and sits down, right? Thinks he's getting fed. So, but I, th- I get your, your, your meaning there. <laughs> yeah, I'm still acting weird, right? You're like, yeah, oh, yeah, totally. I think he is high. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. I swear, you got me so good. I'm just taking me a minute to come back from it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Because in my mind, I was like, "Oh boy, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get through this podcast?" (laughs) Let the games begin. Should we call the girlfriend? What's going on? (laughs) Oh, by the way, she was not. When I told her what I was doing, she's like. No, don't, don't, because she's so anti-drug, Christina. She's like, no, no, chop, chop, chop. It's like some, a Spanish thing. That's like a whole story. She invented a word herself, right? And by, by the way, guys, so Jordan met his wife um, 
what he was touring. Mm -hmm. and I love this story. And, and he didn't speak, what, what did she speak again? She speaks, she's from Argentina. She doesn't speak English. I didn't speak Spanish. So what happened was when I met her, I saw her, she was gorgeous. We started, I got her at her Instagram. We started DMing. I DMed her, invited her to another event. For five nights, we're talking all night long, five hours a night. Like, and I'm like looking at her pictures and I'm a shallow bastard, I admit. I'm like falling in love with the pictures, but I'm also having these in-depth conversations. It's like you're really long. And you're doing it through Google Translate, Well, right? I didn't know or that. Something? That's the punchline. You, you just took, gave away. You took you my punchline. Oh. Punch but I didn't know that. And the fifth night, I'm like, hey, let's, you know, we're having these long conversations. Like, I'm going to be there in a week. Let's have dinner. She's like, I can't have dinner with you. I'm like, why not? She's like, I don't speak English. I'm like, what? I'm like, what do you mean you don't speak English? I mean, I'm using Google Translate. She goes, do you speak Spanish? I'm like, no. She's like, well, then how are we going to go? I said, I looked at the pictures again. I got a solution. I'm going to learn to speak Spanish by next week. And that's what I did. I actually memorized the dictionary. It's and so <laughs> crazy that you figured that out. Uh -huh. The power of... No, no, of the, be the best was, the best. Is, and then he takes it right back to the U.S. And he's like, you got to come meet my new girlfriend. I'm going to marry her. I love her. <laughs> She's the greatest. I'm like, sure. And I don't know any of this. So I get there and like... They were literally, it was like a subtitles lunch. <laughs> oh, wait, we're talking. And he's like, he's like, 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 like going back and forth. He's, he's like, when did you learn to speak Spanish? When did you learn to speak Spanish? He goes, two weeks ago. <laughs> when we started dating. <laughs> True. But the best part, though, is that, you know, she's got a very, she's a great family, very successful father, and they don't speak any English at all. You know, they're from Argentina, and uh, I had to meet the family, and it was the abuelas, the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, I, and the father's a businessman, so, and he's in real estate politics, so I, went down there before and I read, spent about a week studying journals in politics and, and business so I could speak business Spanish. And when I met the guy, I was talking about taxes, polit politics and laws. He's like, how the fuck did you learn how to speak uh, like a, a legal Spanish? He's like, ah, oh. like, yeah. But I want, you're, you're a genius, mind well, well, I'll tell you the better one though. You're not just a pretty face, you're Thank actually you. a genius. Can, can I tell you something, a bet, better story though, about this? This is, you're gonna make, everyone's gonna laugh. Oh my God, one. don't stop talking. No, this tell is us going, everything. You're gonna love this one, ready? So. I had mastered Spanish in like four weeks. I was really freaking good. I was like, I was fluent, except for words I never heard before. Mostly I was fluent, right? But I said, I want to fucking Spanish. I want to have sex. I want, because when you're all got, like, what do you say to a girl? Like, when you know, my honey, I love you. You're the best. Oh my God, please go. This work, we, we take this for granted in English. All the things you would say to a partner when you're having sex and you're intimate and when you're coming and, and when you want to, you'll flip over, go to the right? And I wanted to be able to say this to her in her own language so she'd have the emotional, visceral response. So what did I do? Logical. I rented a movie, like a, a, a porno in Spanish. <laughs> And I wanted to watch, it was like a hardcore X-ray, but like softcore, but Spanish, right? And I watched this freaking thing with subtitles, and I'm back, mm, mm, okay, and I rewind it, I put the English back on, ah, oh, got that one, you know, lick, chupa, me, pee, all this stuff, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm like freaking prepared. I got all my notes in my head, it's like all, I got the whole software program running. I said, I'm gonna have sex with this girl, she's gonna fucking melt. She's gonna melt when she, she has me do this because she's not gonna know what hit her, right? So we get in bed, we start fooling around, and I start breaking out the-, the my people. I break it out the first, she's like, ah! What, what, what are you saying? That's from Mexico and Spain. We don't say that in Argentina. It's like the worst, I called it like a total whore asshole. Like I was saying things to her that like were the most disgusting, gross things. She's like, we don't use those words. Argentinians different. Oh my God, I remember you told me this when we were at dinner that one time. She's like revolted. She ran out the door like I called her like a mother or son of a mother or something like that. I, I thought I was calling him my love. <laughs> Little did you know. Somehow we're still together and we're married now, yeah? That's awesome. And her English, you see, is amazing now. Yeah, yeah. She's fluent now, believe it or not. You haven't we have to go off for dinner again. She's fluent. You'd be, you'd be shocked. No, I remember from Jeff's birthday. It was just insane. Even better now. Like, yeah, she's better. She's acting now, so she's reading scripts all day. Uh -huh. So she's really getting good. It's, uh, you two have blown my mind. I think you're... you're Love story is what movies are made of. <laughs> in the fact that in the fact that like you have your story, Jordan, and then it's like your second lease on life mm. with this new incredible woman who if anyone ever gets the opportunity to meet her, she is the nicest, most beautiful, to herself quiet lady. And then it's like is the complete juxtaposition of what you are. Yeah, she's you very know what different I mean? than me. She's very refined but and classy. But you complement each other really well. <laughs> yeah, listen, I think that, you know, listen, I was very fortunate. You know, my, 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 the woman I was with before, she was very nice too. We just, you know, you go through times in your life and different you grow phases. You grow from each relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that really I, I've had since, you know, the whole movie thing and, that, and, and the last wife, 
But the one last one before Christina was actually a really a more healthy adult relationship mm -hmm. where I was learned to be loyal and understand someone's feelings. So really, in some way, it prepared, it made me a much better person to go into this relationship. So, um, and I am still friends with my ex. We she kids around. She goes, I, I made you a better man for the next one. Like I, we went through all the shit together to grow. And then yeah, I met Christina. So, yeah. but she's amazing because, you know, she has like some really great things going for her. Like the love of her father. I've noticed over like things that are important to women. They have good relationships with their dad. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really big deal. And she, so that's gives them a certain strength and confidence. Not that anything can't be overcome, but I, I do notice that there are certain things in, in women that make them, I think easier to be with as, as a man. It is true. I, I find that because I have a really great relationship with my dad and I'm aware. I don't have the same issues as my friends exactly. who don't have it's really good relationships with and, their dad. And anyone, yeah, anyone could always overcome it over time. Yeah. But it's just interesting to see because uh, there's a certain quiet confidence and like just knowing that there's someone that'll make everything okay that's always there. It's the like only that. man who will never leave you. Basically, yeah. I'll dad. never leave you, Cal. <laughs> you stuck with me. As she said, as she said, it's the only man will never leave you. <laughs> Sans Jeff. Excluding Sans Jeff. Jeff. Excluding Jeff. If you're like most people, you know that apartments.com is the most popular place to find a place. That's because apartments.com has the most listings and the most ways to find them. All thanks to some of the most powerful tools of 3D virtual tools. Yeah, I mean, the 3D tours are next level on Parmas.com. I know that you really mean that because you just got really serious about how good they are as somebody house hunting. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking for my place in Florida. And thanks to Parmas.com, I know what every lobby, every hallway, everything looks like in all the buildings I like. It's amazing. Apartments.com, the most popular place to find a place. This is like a this is like a professional <laughs> set, you guys. Like the guy did this whole like is that did they teach you that in like producer school? You crawl on the and like they get uh, I'm not gonna get in frame in my office. They'd be like, here you go, it's just gonna red ball. Like I was like, you know, no one cares. We're like, yeah, it sucks around here. We suck, you know. We don't try to be good at what we do. No, we only, we stepped up our game for you, Jordan. I love it. Today. It's working, you know. I did say that we had to take some of the decorations down because I thought they were a bit too much. Like what? We had like this balloon arch of rainbow balloons that went above our head. Not my thing. <laughs> Thank you. Just Thank saying, you. you know? I knew it. I'm all for the rainbows and everything, but you little, know. Little Donnie wanted to uh, zoom in and say hi. Oh, do, you, do you remember, okay, <laughs> did you ever hear about how Donnie and Jeff were going to get married? <laughs> well, now we're really getting to some good shit here. <laughs> Let so, me hear, this is going to be the number one podcast. Let's it's hear this one. Much, it's too much detail. It's just too much. It's too long to tell the story. Well, could Please you, just tell me you were going to be the husband. No. Yeah, I was. Okay. Well, Donnie was, was we, we went through this whole argument, and then I would Donnie, remember walking Don, through the hallways of so this Don, hotel. Donnie was sleeping with this girl in Vegas, and she had a, she was pregnant with a baby, and she thought he thought it was her baby. But, like, so much so that, like, we were taking pictures of the baby and then pictures of Donnie when Donnie was a baby, and this kid looked like Donnie. So we did a DNA test. And? And it turned out it wasn't, but this went on for nine months. So for nine How months. How long ago is this? This is uh, four so years, a couple years five, ago. Four, yeah. four or five years three, ago? Maybe three, four years mm. ago. No, no, anyway, so, way more, like, so, so Larry and Jen and Kelly were all at dinner all the time and we're talking about Donnie's baby. So I was like, look, Donnie, why don't we just get married and then we'll have like a TV show. Like, and then Larry's like, two and a half men and a, or one and a half men and a baby. And like, and then we're like, <laughs> oh, we got really into it because I'm like, oh my God, I started seeing dollar signs. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to raise this kid with Donnie. This is going to be amazing. Like, I'm totally going to be married with this kid. It's going to be great. And then it wasn't his baby. So it was wasn't his it was baby, a bad but, end of climax. but like the, the whole thing was like, I had to like book out this weekend because we were going to end up going to Vegas so that they could get married. And I was just like, this is the craziest thing ever. <laughs> anyway, those are the about beaches. The so he was climbing, was up, right the, right so he was climbing up the pad. That was right, <laughs> that was right when we were going to, uh, it, we were still doing the beaches man. So mm. I was like, you cool. Know. Wow. Heyday of insanity. Yeah. I understand. Now, now I'm a corporate guy, nice and skinny. You know, I lost 240 pounds. Which is amazing, by the way. Thank you, thank you, Jordan. You look amazing, thank too, by so the way. Much, really, Jordan. you do. Amazing, you know? Better we, than Jeff, for sure. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> we did what we said we were going to do at the beginning of this pandemic, and that was we have enough time to focus on ourselves. Let's fix the rest of our broken problems and enter into this so that every, when we come out, everyone was like, oh, they look so good and skinny. Did they have COVID? And we're going to be like, no, <laughs> we did not. Well, you guys look great. You really do. 
Thank you, Jordan. You look even better. Oh, I mean, I'm you know, looking for the fountain of middle age. <laughs> fountain of middle age. Yeah. I still can't get over how you punked us. You totally threw me off my game. <laughs> no, honestly, like I had all these questions ready to go. I wanted to talk to you about Bitcoin and Dogecoin and crypto yeah. and the sick. The other sick thing is, as high as I ever was, I always have the ability to talk about business. Like I'll, I'll tell you a great story with Leo. So when we were preparing for the movie, DiCaprio, DiCaprio, right? So when there's a, there's a scene in the movie where he's like uh, teaching the brokers how to sell, mm -hmm. right? And I wrote all those scenes. Like every winter wrote through me, but those specific scenes I rewrote the, the uh, scripts. And Leo calls me, and I just had knee replacement. I had a, my um, my uh, a, a, my, my, I had my uh, my my uh, ligament. I had torn ligament, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a replacement done, and I was like literally one day post surgery. Them were all shots in the ass, and you know, of course, like I was abusing them. Like they, they let me, they made the, the fatal error of giving me the shots to take. <laughs> oh, yeah. But okay, you so, know, uh, so I, I, just, I just, I just had leg surgery. A seven so day prescription <laughs> was gone in two days, right? So Leo calls me up. He's like, buddy, like he's, and he's speaking to my wife, Ann, back then. He's like, I need to speak to Jordan. I have to have questions. He's, I need to get trained right now in the straight line. Like, I'm doing this scene like tomorrow. She, she's like, well, he's like, you know, like he's asleep and he's like, you know, on three shots of Demerol, hold on. And she's like, can you talk to him? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what's up, buddy, right? And he's like, listen, can you, can you teach me how to do? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And instantly, because it was sales, I, I know it's so unconsciously, I locked into it and gave like this flawless explanation and coached him in the straight line. And then the second he hung up, I was like, Ugh, back down. And I have it on tape, by the way. I have the whole thing on tape. Yes. It's like muscle memory. It's for muscle you. memory for yeah. me. Exactly. No, but you know, one of the, I, I got to go off like like subject one second. One of the, my favorite things about Jordan is you might have forgot this. You might not even know this. When we had our bad OCD there in Corona, uh -huh. oh god, one of the main reasons of out of it is because of Jordan. And I'll let Jordan tell that quick story. No, like he was Jeff was <laughs> losing his shit. She knows. I Kelly was there. He, invited, yeah. he bought a beautiful new home, right? He invited me over to see Christine and I to see the home and. And he's like, oh, come over. You got to, it's beautiful. You're going to love it. It's a little bit of work being done still, but you're going to love it. And I'm like, all right, great. So, we, you know, whatever, it's Corona times. <laughs> okay, now, so I, had I'm, the kitchen been redone no, yet no, no, or any of that? Well, no, but like, well, you have to understand that. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But like, I never gave a shit about Corona because I, I never get sick. I know it was real. I'm not saying it wasn't or whatever, right? And I did eventually get it, but I was. Oh, I, you I did. did? I did, yeah. And I still have massive antibodies to this day from eight months ago. I've been a very minor case, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, I was never. One, I never wore masks unless I was forced to. I just didn't really care. I'm very healthy, right? And so he said, come over. So like I come over and Christine's a bit more careful. So I'm not even wearing a mask, whatever, right, you know? So mm -hmm. like we drive over to Jeff's house. I get there, I'm like, I think this is the house. And like, I'm looking, it's kind of quiet out there. I'm like, so like, ah, oh, this is it. I knock on the door, there's no answer. So I'm like, I knock on the door again. Finally, he comes out in like a freaking hazmat suit, but he won't open the door. He's like, through the door, hey, what's up? What do you think? <laughs> I'm like, let me in. I can't. I can't let you in the house. This, this virus is around. I'm like, Jeff, let me in the freaking house. Was this before he, or after listen, we listen, saw no, the fighter listen, jet plane? Listen, he says, he, says, let, I said, he goes, I can't let you in. It's dangerous. I said, get, let, I just drove 30 freaking minutes out here, right? Let me in. No, I, 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 it's not me. It's my girlfriend's aunt's uncle's cousin's grandmother. I'm scared that she's going to get it. So it's not me, buddy. It's them. I'm like, hold on, I'll come out. He comes out like fully cloaked in hazmat with a one glove on and one hand open, like Michael Jackson shit, right? And he's talked to me. He's like, he's get, he's like, he's got this look like the insane captive in his eye, like you know, like, that look like he's like he's, he's like a Unabomber in embryo, basically, right? <laughs> so anyway, so he, in embryo. right, right. So wait, so like, he won't let he really he won't let me in. He walks me out back. He's like, you, you just I can't. Sat, I sat on the couch, twelve feet away from him. You just can't come in. It's just too dangerous, right? I'm like, whatever. <laughs> That's it. Three days later, I get a call from Larry. Larry, right? Yeah. Was this when he did, went to Those, Vegas? You heard about Beecher? You seen Beecher? I'm like, no, he's locked up in his house in a hazmat suit. Really? I heard he was naked with a shirt off in Vegas with no mask on, <laughs> drinking and hugging and slobbering over people three days later. Screaming, you got, don't hate on me because I'm skinny running no, around. And the he said, I furloughed my marker. Yeah, and I was screaming. I, supposedly I said, I furloughed my marker. I furloughed. Was, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, s well, swinging his shirt around his head. But he, many people went through this. And he did, go, he did ha he had this like really bad moment of where he was just like completely terrified of this virus. And I think part of it was the, was the fault of the media. They made everyone 
hundred percent the fault of the media exactly. for anyone and listening. They need so help. Scared. And, and, and it, it's just OCD. I was like, Jeff, just shut up and go about your life and stop. And you, you know, just stop. And eventually, I said enough times, and you did. <laughs> yeah, Jordy snapped me out of it. Between that Wait, and the did OCD you specialist. infrared sauna as well? I, I think infrared. I like all that stuff is really good, yeah. you know. But like, it, it was some serious issues going down there. Like, you know, I mean, he, I mean, honestly, you had to see this. Like, he was inside in a hazmat suit. Like, he was like protecting him from himself catching. Him. <laughs> no, no, trust me, I was aware. Jeff and I were equal in that area of like, <laughs> yeah, it was not bad. letting people come over, and it was oh. it was so strange because. The whole thing was no one knew who had it and who didn't. There's no yeah. way of knowing until you're too far gone. Yeah. And it's just this whole perception of I, how dirty human beings really are came over me. And I just realized that everything I probably touch is dirty. This I is am true. dirty. I can't touch anything. And mm. Jeff and I spiraled. It was bad, as you both know. Anyway, let's move to more fun subjects. Yeah. Like? Ooh. I don't know. What do you got going on, Jordy? I got a lot going on. Aside from taking over the world. No, I think so. I'm very fortunate that, um, you know, Corona was very challenging economically for a lot of people. Um, for me, it was, it actually was, it was a, a good thing, a positive thing. Cause I, about a year before that I'd started pivoting into a lot of online stuff mm -hmm. and it made me realize that things that I thought were not possible were actually possible. Like yeah. virtual seminars, virtual consulting sessions, um, you know, enhanced learning online. So it really just put, put me in a new direction. And I chopped down my overhead originally and now, you know, thankfully it worked out really, really well. And um, now that we're exiting out of it, it's, um, I, think, I think it's really a time where if you wanna work hard, and you want to take a little bit of risk, calculate risks, right? Because mm -hmm. there's always risk involved when you're going out there and trying to, you know, make money. You can really make huge gains in your life financially, uh, in business, and I think it's uh, it's really an opportunity for everyone right now. It's a, it's an exciting time, so I think everyone should be excited about that and be thinking about seizing the moment. Hey, it's Kelly. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Jeff, let me ask you a question. Are you ready for summer? Of course, Kel, I'm ready for the summer. I'm working on my body daily. I got my 90-day fitness challenge going right now. Okay, well, if you're trying to get ready for the summer, then you've got to visit our friends at the European Wax Center. They're expertly trained in preparing, protecting, and pampering your skin. Pool season is here, and it's time to get your bikini wax on. Did you know European Wax Center does over 7.5 million bikinis a year? With numbers like those, you know you're getting the best bikini service. Their secret is their signature comfort wax. That's right, I said comfort wax. It's a special blend of beeswax sourced from Europe. It contains skin-soothing ingredients that allows for easy hair removal for a less painful experience. And you know when it comes to bikini waxes... The less pain is always better. That's right, Kel. We want to give you, and they're so confident that you're going to love their services, that they're offering every first-time guest their first wax free. That's right. The first wax is free. That's incredible. So if you too want to get your very first wax at European Wax Center, go to waxcenter.com and book your reservation today. Your first wax is free. In what ways would you advise people to seize this moment? Well, I, I think that, you know, in normal times, right, when everything is in alignment, where like, you know, things are happening a certain way and nothing's, there's no shakeup, so to speak, right? There's, there's opportunity then too. But if you go back in history and you say, when were the biggest fortunes made? When were the quickest fortunes made? They were typically at these moments of, of crisis, when there was Dam, World War, well, all things like, this. like you know, what Great Depression. Out of mm -hmm. the Great Depression comes the greatest companies ever. Um, you know, out of the dot com crash comes Amazon. Like, there's always these paradigm shifts, right? And there's been obvious a massive paradigm shift in the last couple of years uh, in a few different things. One area is certainly in this shift towards online consumption and mm -hmm. um, the ability to work from home. It's almost it's it's so amazing when you think about historically how society has evolved over the years where so you know people came from the outskirts the farms and as the industrial revolution hit people concentrated into the cities because that's where the work was because yeah. technology created better jobs in the cities so these big cities formed then slowly the suburbs spread out and now suddenly 
because of technology, because of virtualization, everyone's now moving back out you through technology. Yeah. The next, the, in, in the information age now, you no longer have to be in the city to do your work or to be vital. And everyone's moving back out to the countryside. See, that's you know? the, side of the side of the pandemic that I'm a bit like, oh no. Because it made us realize how self-sufficient and reliant we really are and, and resilient we mm. are as human beings and how cost effectively cost effectively we can do all the things that sure. we were doing the productions the tv shows you know with no hair and makeup no budget no lighting no special cameras and we were doing all of that yeah. for a year yeah and it's completely changed everything so like when i go in and ask for like my hair and makeup to be paid for companies say no now and yeah. i'm like yeah, I think that's certainly a, a, a big part of it. I also think, though, that human beings are human beings. And I think that, as we see, like yesterday, they announced no more masks. All of a sudden, the uh, CDC says it's safe, so it's safe, right? Like, I mean, it was safe the day before that, but hey, they say it's safe, and now there's no more masks. And I really believe, I said this right when it hit, I said this, you'll be shocked how people forget about this so fast. That in they one year, in I, one, I thought it was going to take like in, a minute. I thought it was no. going to be a minute. In a matter of months, like, movie theaters will be out. packed. Everyone, it's going to be, what corona? This is not the first pandemic. It's the first pandemic that we remember, okay? It's not the first pandemic. Yeah. Human beings are social creatures. They do not want to isolate. It's an unnatural state to isolate. Mm -hmm. So I think that people are going to, what I'm saying is like, in terms of just opportunities exist everywhere. And also it's you know, part of this whole crypto craze right now is part of that. It's all part of this wave of decentralization. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big aspect of this. So I think there's huge opportunity in lots of different areas right now um, for those that want to seize the moment and work hard and take some risk. See, I, I've been calling this moment the, the great deprogramming and reprogramming of America. And, and in fact, the whole world, because it's made us all take a look about and see what's really important, what we really need, what we don't. But I think it's also shown how when people are forced to pivot, how smart they can be. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's things that, I agree, things, things that still don't make sense to me, like, you know, some of the, <laughs> oh, like some of the, uh, the it was a, a, you know, a natural playing field that was created, not level, like where Amazon was able to just like, it's like, oh, let's, it's just like almost too weird sometimes. If, if things are just seem too weird, I don't know. Like, you know. It's too I, good to be I, true. I, like, well, I just strange. remember, I remember this moment when I went out and I, I wanted to buy Christina a present, you know? And I went out to a store and like, oh no, like all the stores are closed. The only place you could buy it's on Amazon. I'm like, how fair is that for the average retailer and merchant? The, 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 the because what is so I, weird, you what know? What I think is that a lot of those products, they have their own individual stores on there. So when you couldn't go into brick and mortar, they were actually selling from brick and mortar just straight to Amazon. So Yes, but the economics of that are far worse for the yeah. merchant when they yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. So if what's happening is they're forced to go into that centralized platform where Amazon A, takes a cut, B, most importantly, steals the information that they have of what's selling and what's not, yeah. and, can, and, and the data, and they undercut the price, and it becomes a situation where, and this, and I, I have nothing against Jeff Bezos, he's a brilliant man, all the power, I, I don't care about it, nothing, it's not personal, I just think I think there was, it was, I don't know if it was accidental, but there was just some weird power that was some, companies just benefited so much and so many people suffered really really badly that was very I that was the most unfair aspect of it all yeah and i think that the way the government handled it was was very very poorly done that's that that's what i think but there's never a, and listen also you know hindsight's 2020 right mm -hmm. i think there was a time truly when no one knew how bad it was going to be right you know i to be honest with you because I have a couple of friends that work in counterintelligence in different countries all over the world and for different governments. And I knew about the virus through them in November. Mm -hmm. It was like November, December. And, and we, so if I'm being told this from somebody who's not that high up. Told what? To, I told about that there's gonna be a pandemic, it's gonna, everything's gonna shut down. They're gonna say it's two weeks, it's not gonna be two weeks, it's gonna last a really long time but they couldn't create hysteria, so they just kept giving us little bits of information at a time. Right, I, I think what I was saying was that 
like there was a time very early on for maybe like I was an outspoken critic of the lockdowns. I was. I was very public about it. Jeff knows. I was <laughs> yeah. I was like one of the most public people saying this is not and it proved to be right. Okay, just just so you know, proof to they, all the information says that's not how the virus was spread. This whole thing of wearing masks outside—it turned out it's ridiculous. I mean, they found in the whole world that this is, you hope you read this one case in the whole world was transmitted from outside. One case, the virus doesn't spread outside; it spreads indoors, and they lock everyone indoors. Gee, I wonder why everyone got sick. Like it was so stupid the way it was handled. If you make sure to make people stay the fuck outside. They, did you see the research? It was the last couple of days where they said that, number one, the CDC was being ridiculous, saying less than 10% chance of, of transmission outside, right? It, it turned out it was the most that could be was 1%, and it's actually one-tenth of 1%, and the, they've only found one case in the world that they could directly trace back to outdoor transmission. And they had everyone locked at home. So you have all these people who are in, in let's say, in, in poverty, who are living in tight. Like for us, it's easy. Oh yeah, go go to your house, Jeff. You're alone. You live in a beautiful I house. I mean, it is the first time I've ever heard of people quarantining the world. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It really is very. It's it's so there was such. I think a lot of it was Trump hating. Like they wanted to. Like look, I think it, like, it they use people's health as no a doubt. political platform, no and a lot of people's lives got lost. A hundred percent. People didn't want to wear a mask and didn't want to follow rules. Yeah. And it. It's, it, I don't think that the American people as a whole were taken into consideration mm. properly because everybody was gambling with their lives to, to make a political statement. And it's just, I mean, did you follow any of the conspiracy theories through all of this? Of course I did. Everything. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, tell me everything. Which no, ones have you I, heard? I, everything. So everything. have you heard the one about them thinking that coronavirus is an alien life form? Yeah, ev everything you possibly yeah. read, I've read. I've read everything. But I will tell you this. I'm not a conspiracy-minded person. And I'm a big believer in the like, Occam's razor, which is basically in the absence of knowing what the truth is, usually the simplest explanation is the most logical one is the right one, yeah. you know? So I don't really think that this was some giant conspiracy. I know, I know them all. Maybe it's possible, okay? Maybe mm -hmm. it's possible. I'm not saying it's not, okay? But at the end of the day, what, what I really believe is that there was a very short window when they did think, and they didn't know, and they genuinely were worried that this could have been the 1917 or 19, the Spanish flu, yeah. which killed 40% of the people who got it, and it was freaking crazy. Like, and I knew within three or four days, I said, this is not, I knew it. I was watching really closely. It wasn't working that way. It was hitting very old people who were sick. People weren't that, were getting asymptomatic. When you got the Spanish flu, you were done. You were 40%, you were gone. People were dropping in the streets. It was, it was a very different thing. Yeah. So it became pretty clear that the logical way to stop this was to take all the older people who were at risk and give them filet mignon, shrimp, give them money. Like, Take care of the people who would who, uh, who could get really killed by this virus and let everyone else go about lives carefully. Be, I'm not saying you shouldn't socially distance, shouldn't even wear masks, I don't believe it, but I, all that's fine. But to make everyone stay home that was yeah. healthy, they should have taken all the older people over 70 who were, were at risk, have them stay home and give them as much money as they needed because you would have had everyone else earning money so there would be no economic you know, disaster that happened for all those months. It would have been all the, the debt that, that the government's in now to try to fund everyone staying home and all the unemployment. You could have kept the economy going and with all that extra money, given all the older people beautiful, wonderful lives. And I think it was just real, it was obvious early on that was the play. But, for, but what happens is that people, they, they go in one direction and then they have no, it's like they have to stay, keep up on their position because they don't want to be wrong and it gets political and, and it became at the end of the, Way a, a way to remove Trump from office, and it worked. It just did. Whether you hate Trump or love Trump, it's a fact that, that this is what removed him from office. The, the, if it wasn't for that, there's no way he would have lost. Uh, I don't care. I, that's my I feel belief. Like the, the Capitol Hill riot had a lot to do with it too. Well, that was a result of him losing, losing. an oh, election. Yeah, what I'm saying that. is, is uh, listen again. There's things that Trump did that I thought were really stupid, and and I. Do you know what I've learned from this election, though? That nothing changes, no matter who's president. <laughs> and that both sides have equally as corrupt yeah, yeah, yeah. things the about same them. Yeah. And it just, it made me really disheartened because you think that you were on the right side of history and then you'd educate yourself in a n different direction and then a different spotlight would shine on something else. And it just, it, 
the ugliness surrounding politics <clears throat> in this country really is so bad. scary. It's really, really terrible. You know what? Let's get off politics for a second because. I've been off my shaving game for the winter, but with the warmer weather coming and summer right around the corner, I can't wait to get back to my regular routine. That first shave after letting your hair grow for a while is always so satisfying. And the Athena Club razor is hands down the best razor I have ever used. I wanted to be a non-believer, but after... I want to say one you I was only like the, after the first use I used it and even my boyfriend noticed the difference he was like oh why are your legs so soft and I was like you know I got this new razor it's very cool Athena Club's razor has thousands of five-star reviews and is designed with built-in skin guards plus the razor blade is surrounded by water activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid which is the holy grail for skin. Let me tell you, if you don't use that, you should be. Truly, this razor makes shaving feel less like a chore and more like me time. I couldn't have said that better. Put it in any other better way. It really does. Show your skin you care with Athena Club Razor Kit. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code Kelly. That's A-T-H-E-N-A-C-L-U-B dot com with promo code Kelly. For twenty percent off, I want to talk about something fun, like Jordan's life. Mm. What the movie they made about Jordan's Ooh. life? Okay, here's my first question about the movie. What? How accurate is it? Well, the good news is you're going to get to find out because I'm, I'm about to sign a deal uh-huh. with one of the largest streaming platforms in the world. I won't say which one, but you guys can <laughs> guess. All right, for the docu series for the Wolf of Wall Street, the real Wolf of Wall Street. So it's going to be the actual um, story um, before, like early years, That's during awesome. and after, and uh, it's going to be directed by, I think, the most, the number one, the best, the top director of documentaries in the world is already committed to doing it. And uh, the Do- number Donnie Davis is going to have a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> and best top, top producers in the world are going to produce it. Uh, awesome. They're already signed on, and we have the platform that we're already is committed to it. But I'd rather not, it'll be announced shortly. But it's gonna be exciting because there's so many great stories. Like even like for example, like the making of the Wolf of Wall Street. Like the most ironic thing is that like so my movie was about like I made these mistakes and I was involved in money laundering and all this stuff, right? And I smuggled money in Switzerland. Well, the people that financed the movie were like Jolo, the maniac. And the Red Granite guys, they did this $3 billion. $5 you know, billion, I hear. $5 billion $5 from billion. theft from Malaysia. So they, the Oh, mu- that right. guy with all the art and uh, stuff. Yes, yes. So they <laughs> actually ended up finance, bought, bought the rights from me, financed the wow. movie. And so there's like this whole story about it's like. It's all stolen Malaysian money. All stolen Malaysian <laughs> money. It's unbelievable. So that's going to be a big part, a really interesting but didn't chapter. Did all different celebrities invest with him too? Not so, no, not invest. No, he gave them money. Oh, okay. He gave them to buy their friendship and stuff. And, um, and like, you know, Leo, of course, had no idea of this. So, like, Leo was... Oh, I forgot. He was one of them, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Leo was just duped by them. He yeah. didn't know. But, but the point is, is that, like, you know, they, they were throwing money around. And there's stories, things that were happening while we were shooting the movie that were just so insane before. And then ultimately they got taken to jail. And so it's going to be a great story about, you know, probably, it's probably, I think it's going to be like probably eight episodes. The, the first might be even two years. Well, what's, what's the story with Jolo? Is this guy like, isn't he in hiding? He's in or? hiding. So I hear, here's the story with Jolo. Jolo um, has gotten reconstructive surgery and does not look like Jolo. So you could, be, are you Jolo? No. You're like, <laughs> You're Wait, not, so is you're it not like, Jolo, are you? Is it like that it's, movie no, it's, Two-Face with Nicolas Cage? No, no, this is literally, it's, no, like, he, it's, like, a, it's like a crazy we, 2040 James Bond movie. Jolo is in a yacht hiding somewhere. So one of the episodes we're, we're thinking about already, we're going to actually do, it's in search of Jolo to try to find, where is Jolo? Where is <laughs> where Reza Aziz? Where are these guys that Jolo? stole all this money? All right, and we want to expose the whole thing. And like, this guy's hiding on a yacht somewhere, floating somewhere. And he, you know, and like, I think he could be beat. Is it, I, I think, I got to ask you a question about your childhood beach that only I know the answer to. Because you could be Jolo. <laughs> or you could be, anyone could be Jolo. What's his last name? Jolo. It's Jolo. He's, he's, a, he's like, he's like, like, like um, you know, one of those, one name. He's like Prince. Jolo. 
J O L O. J O L O. Jolo. Like J Lo, but an O in the middle. It's Jolo and Reza Aziz. These guys were like the, you know, one was from the Malaysian, his father was the premier of Mal President Malaysia. Why does it have like best of collection? Jolo? Yeah. Jolo Malaysia. Put J O L O Malaysia in there. Jolo Malaysia. Kel, this is like, this is so, you have to like, it's like a two hour read. No, this is like, you have you no have idea. You like sit is, and read and understand this. This for is anyone a whole listening, story. It's the craziest story. Like, you don't even believe the story until you read this. And, like, the, and then you the still best, don't understand it. The, I heard he once spent $7 million on a champagne bath for her or something. He's a maniac, the guy. But he's now in hiding and he's under a, you know, an international arrest warrant. And, and a new face. A new face, exactly. I want to see. Okay, anyone listening to the show right now, Fine, subscribe. <laughs> Post a picture of Jolo in the comments section. We want to know what we his new know face looks like. We're going to find him in this documentary. We're going to make it. Jordan limited. Belford is looking for Jolo. We are. We're all so looking. You can go to the wolf at Jordan Belford. And I, I think this, this stream has got some. The stream has got some really deep look, pockets. Look, him. Look, like, I'm looking at all the different celebrities he's with. He's with Alicia Keys. Everyone. So, all right. And uh, Os Leonardo Osborne and Beecher team. We need you guys to do us a favor out there. So Jordan is looking for Jolo. He needs to connect with him. So please DM anyone any, who any, yeah. any information on Jolo because we would Reza, like to see his yeah. new face. Or Reza. We got to find these guys because they, we, want, need, to, we want them to be in the documentary. We well, want them to be in Jordy's documentary. Yeah, they're gonna, we're going to episode. We'll go film. We'll be nice. We'll film. We'll go to the boat. We'll film them and get, put a bag over his head or something so yeah. no one Some, knows there's no be, white And then like a voice right? modulator Exa so exactly, they yeah. can't hear what you sound like. So just like. please contact yeah. at Jordan Belford. Yeah. With any information, I have fans all over the world. I'm sure one of my fans knows where Jolo is with Jolo. and where Razor is, and they're gonna find him, and we're gonna out them, and we're gonna put them in this docu series, yes. and, and I just we want to hear the story. No, 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 Jordy, but do the right, like, like cover the faces, no, exactly. cover the background. We will. We will. We will. You could stay hidden, guys. Jordan just wants to find you. He needs. I've you. always believe wanted in, to have something interesting offer, to me we, where I could get interviewed like that. We could offer them Donnie as a sacrifice, <laughs> like well, on a, on a leash. Don, just he's yours. I feel like he would go willingly. He would, party. right? Just oh, take him. Donnie would do, to be, have like sex parties. Take on him. Like, you could have him. Like he's oh yours, right? Wait, is so he really happy. in Miami right now? He's raging in Miami. I'm right worried. Now. Hold on. For Miami? Talking. I'll, I'll no, for, for, for Miami and Donnie. <laughs> because yeah. I'm like, what is he doing? He's a horny little devil. By the way, I just looked at my focus, Donnie called me before, and I saw your text. Is he high, Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Victory is oh, mine. You guys really, really played me on that yeah. one. Oh, my God. I, I should have put more. I think I didn't have enough. No, you know, it was on your lip, and I'm like, oh, my God. Kelly's going to see he's on coke. <laughs> I was freaking <laughs> out because Kelly just got sober again. I'm like, we can't have Kelly relapse with yeah. Jordan here. She loves you too much. Christina's like, Don't Donnie, no one can hear you, but your ears must be buzzing. He's wearing a hat. It looks like he's been drinking uh, margaritas. What's up, Donnie? Donnie, where are you? What's up, brother? He said, Jordan. He, didn't even, say he didn't even say hi, Kelly. He Jordan. said, my no, man. Star Jordan. And then he went, Jordan, what's up? <laughs> yes, he did. Kaye Ocho. <laughs> well, Donnie, dude, we're talking about a part for you in the docuseries coming up. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna unleash you on Jolo in, uh, in uh, the Mediterranean or somewhere. He's on a boat in the South China Sea. We want to use you as a, a peace China offering sea. to get him to, uh, and to come out of uh, hiding, you know? And Jeff says you'd love to do it. Donnie, I can only see your earlobe. And uh, we're going to say goodbye now. We love you, buddy. All right. Bye. Later, bro. Later, Donnie. Donnie. He's the What's man. Donnie doing in Miami? He's, he's partying. If someone's partying. Nothing down, good. Is partying. he being paid? Is he at least paying him? He gets paid and then he goes and rages. He does what he always does. What is, is he, he doing? What, what do they pay him? What do they pay him usually? He, he makes a lot of money. Usually he gets 10, 15, 20 grand. Okay. Yeah. Donnie gets paid. Good for Donnie. Yeah. Is it limits to what they can do or no? No, this isn't, this isn't a sex thing. This is he's goes. No, as a but performer. like, do can they? Like, I know, like, no, no, he's a rock star. Like, okay, okay so we all... joke, we joke about Donnie, but okay, aside, Donnie's a rock star. Donnie he, does like he, is. he does impersonations. He does all different performances. He runs teams of, of little people. That Just do, don't like, have him say kiss. anything that's important. If it's more than like a three word catchphrase, he won't get it right. <laughs> Do you why, remember? Why, why you dis I do remember. The, the hotel. Well, there was word. You don't even know the one when he when he was hired to do mini Trump. They hired him to do mini Trump at a. Uh, he play. He has dresses as mini Trump. It's the funniest thing ever. And uh, he got this corporate gig. They paid him like thirty five G to do it. And he shows up and he's supposed to give a speech. 
and he's doing it. He's turning. You can see the red through the uh, orange face. He was oh, so. Johnny. He was just off. It was just one of those days. I, off. I think he, and he, he just, and, no. He goes. You know, he, he just like and it was like crickets. He was doing jokes. And it was like cricket, cricket, cricket. He needs his own coin. And then he goes. And then he goes. Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> Cause now I'm like, when, if all else fails and your speech sucks, I go, just do the grab him by the pussy, Donnie. He goes, grab him by the pussy. Everyone starts laughing. Oh and then he, they're also drinking with him and partying with him. It was like, I'm like, oh, poor Donnie. He needs his own cryptocurrency, a Donnie coin. Oh, he does. Donnie coin. He, it would do, be so he really does. amazing. It can't be worse than Doge, right? <laughs> Doge. The Kelly Osborne and Jeff Beecher Show is sponsored by BetterHelp online therapy. You know, I thought it'd be a great time to remind everyone listening that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And throughout June, our show is proud to join the cause of destigmatizing therapy. By now you've heard Kelly and I talk about our struggles with weight loss and our mental health issues. You know, we're in our therapy sessions all the time. And if you find yourself struggling with relationships or having difficulty sleeping or difficulty meeting your goals, if you're feeling anxious or stressed like we all do, BetterHelp counselors can listen and they can help. Trust me. They really can. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional in under 48 hours. No, it's n- no, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's a professional counsel It's professional counseling done securely online. Cal. The best part about BetterHelp is that the service is available everywhere to clients worldwide and they make it easy. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor whenever you need them, schedule weekly video chats, phone calls, live sessions. Plus, it's so much more affordable than traditional offline counseling. And financial aid is available for the people that can't afford it. That's one of my favorite parts about this app, Jeff. It, it doesn't exclude anyone and they will help you Get the therapy that you need. If you're listening and you need help right now, try BetterHelp. Our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash Osborne. That's betterhelp.com slash O-S-B-O-U-R-N-E. Okay, if I was going to invest in any form of cryptocurrency, what would you say I should invest in? You're really hitting Jordan with his buzzwords. You're going to get him crazy again. He's going to go crazy like he did with with, uh, with Corona. I would think that... He's very disappointed in Elon no, well, right now. I think Ethereum is... I think I'm pretty disappointed in Elon. Because I'm a big Elon fan. I like Elon Musk. Uh-huh. And I think that... I don't know if he realizes how irresponsible what he's doing is I, I really I think well, he's a, well Kelly doesn't know and to people that don't I think he's a good, I think he's a good guy I, like, I, don't, I don't know if he realizes so, like, so I, I just know a lot of so two days ago he made a statement after pushing Bitcoin for many many months pushes everyone buy Bitcoin everyone buy Bitcoin we're going to accept Bitcoin we bought a billion five in Bitcoin oh, then they pulled Tesla from Bitcoin and yeah. then, he, then, then two days ago he goes we're no longer accepting Bitcoin because of the energy concerns but he knew that go it's not a valid excuse but that's not even what it is it's more than like I think will that, he accept Dogecoin though well, Maybe, I think, but I think but the knows, issue that is it doesn't even matter it still doesn't matter the issue is is that people. is that for him and I really like the guy that's why I'm conflicted about this but I really think it's terrible because you know number one I don't think it's legal what he's doing. Like, I, I, I think it's blatantly, it's patently illegal. And that's now, especially, he said today that he was doing work on the code of Dogecoin, all right, to improve its utility. Now, that's one of the key tests in SEC law, that if you actually are working on something that and you're it's also, a sec- it's a it becomes a security, it's called the Howey test, okay? Uh-huh. And it's a very important thing. And the reason Bitcoin is not a security is because no one it, it, it's no one, it's descent, no one's yeah. behind it so to speak it's not because if someone's actually a group of people are working on if you're promoting something and at the same time you're working on it to make it more valuable it becomes a security and okay. and it just seemed like i was like i don't understand this like and and i think that to him he's just he's a very idealistic guy he's a big forward thinker he's a genius and I don't think he realizes a lot of really young kids. His whole family is Well, there's a lot of young kids that follow his advice. Like, he says stuff he's probably joking half the time, and people will take his stuff religiously. And a lot of people bought Dogecoin at 72 cents a share, and it plummeted to 40. And you know it's come back a bit since then. People tend to sell at the bottom. So there's a lot of people losing a lot of money, a lot of people making money, but that it's all based on one person's like at any moment in time, he could wake up and crash 
He can crash Doge. He can drive Doge to a penny in one tweet. Mm -hmm. One tweet, Doge is a penny from him. That's very dangerous, okay? And I think it's also, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. He seems to be really irresponsible. He like, tweets if he wakes up. And, I, and, and again, I think he's a good guy. I, I don't think he really is doing it to try to hurt anyone or make money. I just think he's going about his life having fun. And he doesn't realize there's armies of kids out there that are looking at what he's doing. And what he's doing is probably not planned and not, he's not like Machiavelli. I really don't think he is. Because mm -hmm. I, I like a lot of his views, but the result is that people are trying to use his tweets to make money in the stock market and no one can anticipate the whims of one man so yeah. he wakes let's say he just wakes up in a few days and says, you know i don't like dogecoin like Anymore. something uh, what, i changed my like, mind how, and he's entitled to that yeah like he's entitled to change his mind but what's gonna happen to all the people that followed him like it, it's really problematic and i think that it also hurts cryptocurrency at a certain point because it takes away from the idea that it truly is a decentralized and a store of value. So if you want to say it's a, it's a store of value, then, if, then one person shouldn't be able to crash a security like that. So I think there's problems, so I'm conflicted because I think he's a good man, so I hate to bash him, but there's things he's doing, I don't think he real, like he know not what he do, I think. Or maybe he's just much smarter than me and I know not what I say. And I'll accept that as well, but I personally think it's dangerous. I also really like what his brother does as well with his uh, farm to table food and the way that he's growing everything non-GMO. I think that's also really important. I just think that everybody in his family is incredibly advanced and... They're aliens is what you're saying. No, I just think where you lack in social skills you gain in, in intelligence and you can't have both jordan's got both he's incredibly social. i know a lot of and people with, with no social skills that are really stupid it's not like i don't think it's a trade-off i don't think it's like a, a, a but do you know what i'm saying like i, I look at there's him no and doubt I, he's a brilliant guy yeah. right he's an extraordinary brilliant guy and i actually think like i think he's a lot more socially savvy than we give him credit for he's become the most the number one influencer in the world. So how could you say he's not socially savvy? He's got 54 million Twitter followers. He says anything and people rely on it as gospel. He's a pretty freaking savvy dude. Yeah. Think about that. And he's got a sense of humor about himself. And I right, think right. we I, all I think saw he, that. Listen, he was great on Saturday Night Live. Right, I don't think he's so socially. I think he's quirky. I think we're all quirky. Look at Beecher. I mean. Can I just <laughs> say, and I know that it's Mental Health Awareness Month and everything, but I just adored that he owned his own ism by saying that he came out saying that he's got Asperger's mm. and I have a few friends with it. And it's difficult to be friends with somebody that has it because they do lack some, it's not that they don't, they don't lack emotional depth. It's just- They don't pick up on social cues very cues, well. No, and sometimes things just, they just don't so get it. So when people tell me I, I'm on the spectrum, is that the same thing? It, well, kind of, but not really. That's it's the spectrum means you're on the cusp. So yeah. imagine like you have this logarithmic curve that smooths out at the top. When you hit over the top, you become, you know, Asperger's. You're like on the rising edge. I don't think you're anything like that at all, though. I don't think it's at all what you are. Thank you. No, I really don't think Who told Asperger's. you you had that? Not even close. A lot of people. Yeah, no. I get a lot. There's no, no way, Jeff. No, okay, you're good. the opposite. No, that's good. That's good. Okay. I, like I wouldn't it. know Attention who said... Attention deficit disorder. Now that one I'll give ADHD, you. ADHD, time management, all that. of that. But I think yeah. ADHD is the greatest gift to have as a business person. It's, I think it's success, most successful people, many at least, have that trait. It's a great trait to have because, number one, you can learn to tame it and, and work with it, but it also gives you moments of great brilliance and insight and the ability to focus on one thing with singular thought and purpose at times. Like I've seen you, you, you have great ideas and you have these inspirational moments and then you're on to the next one. Well, that's a great way to make money if you can surround yourself with people that can execute on your inspirations. And that's what a lot of smart people that have that trait do. Yeah, but then I, you could be like me on the flip side of it and start a million projects that you don't finish. Right. Well, like, yeah, it's life's you know about growth. <laughs> you gotta grow there, and you know you gotta learn. Yeah. No, you gotta surround yourself with people that, that are your sort of like that. You know, have the qualities that you don't possess. That's what I do. I mean, I'm very much like that too. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I have a lot of ideas, and I don't like to stick with something too long. But I can 
force myself to focus on one thing for, with a lot of effort for a certain period of time. I don't want to be the guy running it every single day. If I had to, I, I could, but it's not where yeah. I live either, you know? You're like me, like to pick it up yeah. and put it down when you want, like move on to the next. Exactly. That's a positive quality though. So what's up for you next? What's going on in the world of Jordan right now? A lot of stuff. I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that, I think the U.S. is probably three to four months ahead of the rest of the world, mm -hmm. or most of the world with the, with the pandemic right now, I think. So I, I'm going to Italy in about, so tomorrow I leave on vacation. Family get together. East Coast, I know. East Coast, gonna, I have a place. Be, I yeah. miss you very much. I know, Jordan. so I got the whole family going there, mother and everything, right? You really That'd fun. be so nice. Yes, yeah, so about seven to ten days. Then I have a photo shoot coming up with David Yarrow, which is going to be amazing. So David Yarrow is probably one of the arguably the best photographers in the world, and he's the one that did that picture with the wolf and the girls and the whole recreation. It, it sold for half a million. Yeah, so now uh, a quarter, but that's good. The quarter was still the number one selling um, photo in Art Basel two years ago, and now we're doing another collaboration where we're re recreating the scene on the yacht with the lobsters. And the oh, FBI awesome. Too. So we're recreating that next in two weeks in Newport. He's got the whole thing planned out. And then be there. you've got to be there for that. You should both come. And then um, I go. I'm definitely going, Cal. So yeah. Then know, I go to uh, Florida Thank for you. a few days to do some consulting. Then Mexico for some oh, more we're, consulting. We're going to go to the crypto uh, yeah, conference. Yeah, exactly. And then Are I go you going to, to that too? Oh, of course I'm going to be there. Then I go to Italy. I'm going to Venice for, con for s to give it to an event. I know, I'm, I'm probably crashing that one. I keep telling you. Which that. is great. I'm exactly, so I'm hoping, and then what I'm hoping, really hoping, is that, um, is that the world opens up again. Because I miss touring. Mm. I love speaking in front of crowds, and I hate doing it virtually. And I do it because I have to, had to, but I, you know, give me, I, I honestly, with any day, I human love the human to human connection. Yeah. I thrive on it, you know? Yeah. I can't wait till third world countries are opening. Again. And then this 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 docu series is going to be a really. Uh, I'm cool so thing. excited about this docu series. Yeah, I, I me too. I think it's going to be really great. It's a great director, and a lot of this stuff comes down to the people that you have that are doing it. Like it's mm -hmm. a good story, obviously. It has a built-in audience, but but I think the people that have attached themselves to this are really talented, and they're great storytellers. Um, so I think it's going to be, and it's going to come out at the 10 year anniversary on the day of Wolf. While you're sitting here enjoying our podcast, I wanted to talk to you about something near and dear to our hearts, our hair. Did you know 30 million women are impacted by weakened and thinning hair? Trust me, I've been there. The amount I bleach my hair, the amount I process it every single time, the curling iron or the straighteners go through it, I damage my hair. Thousands of women have taken back control of their hair and their confidence with Nutrafol. Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas for women that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through all stages of life. I love Nutrafol. Not only does it help your hair, but it helps you feel more confident about yourself. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering in the promo code Osborne to save 20% of your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it's only available to U.S. customers for limited time. Plus free shipping on every order. Get 20% off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com. Promo code Osborne, O-S-B-O-U-R-N-E. So it's genius. been 10 years since Believe it that's or not. been out. That's crazy. insane. You know what the craziest thing is? If you go to iTunes right now, the number... 10 or 11 movie in the world, Wolf of Wall Street, still. Every day, any day, every month, the Wolf of Wall Street still the top ten, 9, 10 to 15. And then Jor Jordan's, uh, you know, our, our next episode, we're doing some TikTok people, and uh, Jor Jordan's TikTok's blowing up. It's crazy. All his videos, like the, the lowest ones, get a million views. I just views. did one yesterday. He just started it like a couple months I, ago. I did one yesterday. It's already got 5 million or 4.5 million views already. It's, TikTok is really fun because... Wait, what's your, is your TikTok Wolf of Wall Street or Jordan? Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street. Street. As verified, so you could know that's the right one. And um, the thing about TikTok... By the way, I don't think you follow me on TikTok, at Jeff Petra. You should 
get what your social media. Well, he, he's here. Uh, you know, Anton, you got to uh, uh, come on, hook go. him up. You know. So um, when I joined TikTok, will you follow me too? Absolutely. So thank you so much. You know what's TikTok is? I, I, you know, every platform has its content that works on that platform, and you have to realize that on TikTok, you know, people don't want to hear about sales training. They want to have fun. It's a fun platform so the challenge for me is i need to put things on there that are congruent with the platform but that also are in line with my brand so that's kind of a hit and miss because like it's easy to do cheap humor and i've done it a little bit because it's fun like falling in a pool because i love doing it because i have a pool in my house and that was a lot of fun to film but the things that do best when I really get like out of 24 million views in one thing and 10 million and 8 million is when I combine what is resonating on the platform but also resonating with my brand. Mm -hmm. so that's a struggle. We actually really work hard on it. To have a team, my kids are involved, Anton leads the team and we they're actually thinking about what content to create that is going to work for my brand and on the platform. And same thing with Instagram. It's a true science. Yeah, it is. It's not like accidental and you got to work for it and it's fun, you know? And you can go viral, really. TikTok's really great. Like Instagram, I don't know. It's like it's getting everyone say it's getting really, really hard to get them to share your stuff unless you pay them. And it's very frustrating sometimes that you know, we're like TikTok, I think I have the highest engagement of any word in the world on TikTok. I really do. I must. There's no way that, I mean, I don't have as many followers as like I don't because I don't do it, I'm not doing it that long, right? So I got a million and a half followers and I'm getting like five times my followers on every single post pretty much. So it's like weird. So Okay, it, now I'm getting overwhelmed. Someone's gonna need to explain to me how this all works. Because I'm like, how if you don't have five million people following you, do you get I have, five million views? I every it's every, all my videos everyone's just says, how are you getting so many views when you have all the followers? Because what happens is is that I think, now no one knows, but I think part of it is I get a massive amount of likes. So the ratio of views to likes is really high. Uh -huh. I got five, one out of five people will like it that sees it. That's really high. Like yeah. if you have like, so if I have a, if I have a million views, I have 200,000 likes. When the average person might have like 20,000 likes, like 10% or something like that, or less. So, so I have this huge percentage of likes so they always put my stuff on the main feed and then my, I grow 100,000 every three days. So it's gr growing every three days. I pick up 100,000. I go 200,000 a week on, 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 on TikTok right now. So I'll probably be at like five. And then when the docu series comes out, it could go, I mean, God knows what could happen then. But <laughs> the thing is, the thing I like about it is that it allows you to communicate directly with your fans. Mm -hmm. Both, in, I think that social media is an amazing thing when used correctly. It's used incorrectly a lot, like for evil people. I hate, you know, the hate, like for me, I love my haters. I love my haters. We all love our haters. I know, I, but like, I think, but, but. I do not. But no, but like, there's a lot of younger kids. Kelly doesn't like them. Like there's haters. No, okay. I, I empathize with them yeah, because yeah, the I, bullying. I think I don't like that, that they must be really No, I don't like the bullying. Yeah. To, to say the things that they say. Exactly. But just to go out there, I'm not that person that's gonna be like, well, I love you anyway. Nah, you're an asshole. Like what? My I we, we we pray for the haters. I'm like we pray, God, please, because if one person hates, a hundred people comment, and there it goes, right? I don't yeah. get as many anymore. I see a lot more. They kind of die out. But the haters are great. But the problem. What are they gonna say? What are they gonna say? This hateful. Thirty-two years ago, you did something wrong. That's this. Thirty-two years ago, you did something wrong. Where you made tons of money uh, exactly, and you partied right. your face off exactly. and had cocaine and that's, that's beautiful it. women in New York. But that's about it. You Living know? the dream. Yeah, like, that, so on. there's not a lot to say. That I don't have many anymore. But I'll tell you what, it's, I think it's very tr troubling. A 16-year-old girl posts something on a platform and all these people say awful, terrible things about a young girl or a young boy who doesn't have as many years as we do to know that it doesn't matter what they say about you. And it hurts them. And it hurts yeah. their self-esteem. And also they look and they don't realize that it's all bullshit, meaning that you see everyone's best life there. Everyone looks, oh, everyone's so happy. But me, I really think it's a problem that like when you, if you, if you don't know better, you'll think that everyone's more beautiful than you, happier than you, has more friends than you, and they're doing cooler things I than you. I always say the world would be such a much a better place if people actually behaved the way they portray themselves there you to go, be right? on and, and, Instagram. And it's a big problem. If people actually showed up for the causes that they post about and the charities and the organizations that they're supposedly supporting and you know donated their time and or money, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in. You're a gum chewer, Jeffrey. I can't. I can't do gum chewing.
Can I tell you why it's actually really good, Jeff? Quips products in general, honestly, A, it's environmentally friendly. It really is. And they have these um, dispensers that you buy and they're refillable. So you get rid of all the excess waste. And since, so when you think about it, how many packets of gum are in landfills? And I, I was sent this product. It is good. The mintiness of how like minty it is, is crazy. It's like really strong. But uh, I gave it to my makeup artist and he keeps it in his kit for me. And it is literally like a godsend sometimes when you just need to have fresh breath. So now you chew gum. So it's sugar-free, it has zero calories, and, it, and it's long-lasting, and has that minty flavor that you like, basically. Yes, I do. And it honestly leaves your breath so fresh. I, I actually really love um, Quip's products in general. Yeah, and, now, and they also have like a toothbrush, right? Where the toothbrush is the best toothbrush ever. I got one in black just recently, right, and it's the right. sickest thing ever. All right, so you got me sold. So basically, it's not a substitute for brushing or flossing, but it's great support for your oral health. You pair that up with the Quip toothbrush, and you're all set. I'm ready to try it. Go to getquip.com slash Osborne right now, and you can get a free plastic dispenser with any refill plan. That's free dispenser at getquip.com slash Osborne, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash O-S-B-O-U-R-N-E. You can also find the electronic toothbrush, refillable floss, and more in the oral care aisle at your local Walmart. Quip, the good habits company. Exactly, I'll give you an example. My last video went viral, and then like four million views was yesterday, it already has four million, right? So only about like 10 or 12, right? The kid, some kid posts something on TikTok, and it was like, it was like- I saw this one. Well, no, like, but he purposely, it's a grown man, probably 24 or something like that, he posted some like the ugliest portrayal of himself, like that he's an actor. He put red shit all over his face and blue on his tongue. He's like pretending to be crying and bawling, like to try to be dramatic, right? And he was like, it was like these, this ugliest portrayal of human existence. Like he was doing it on purpose, uh-huh. right? So like I, so like it was this song, like and he's like screaming, "I'm sorry." It's like you couldn't look at this, and like and I'm like, like what the fuck, right? Uh-huh. So like it was like him doing it for like four seconds, and I'm like. That's a freaking ad for birth control. <laughs> like that's and it. That was the whole video. That's the whole thing. Have like 20 and it's you know, get twenty million views because it's true. Because like, but that's not hurt. The kid's doing. He saw it, but he's doing it on. That's not him. He did it on purpose. He went out there and painted his blue tongue. He's looking for the attention. He got his moment of fame from me. So good for him. But I would never go out there and and say something. You understand? Like you know, it's it, about someone that was younger and that was just trying to do something cool. That's that's I think the the worst side of it. You my, know? Yeah. my favorite TikTok before we wrap things up was the the other one when you go uh, when the kid. It's like, you know, I was oh Amer- America, America. Yeah. Some British kids like tell me like it was sort of like his edge was like, like America is not so great. He goes, I don't want if you think America is the greatest country in the world, tell me, give me one reason why America is the greatest country in the world. Like, I really want to know, and I'm like, I'll tell you why. <laughs> you know, because you could you could you know make a ton of money, make a huge mistake, go to jail, lose everything. Come back from that, learn your lesson, and have Leonardo DiCaprio Cap- play you in a fucking movie. How about yeah. them apples? Yeah. And that, yes, can we have a round of right? applause for that? And, and by the way, yes, and yeah. let's not forget Scorsese directing the movie. Right, but that's from America, but that truly and is. Joe, and Joe Lowe and Reza Finance. Joe Lowe Finance again. We're going to find Joe Lowe. But, that, but um, that truly is America, and it doesn't exist. In most countries, most countries, it's so true. They that like if you do something or declare bankruptcy, it's like there's this sort of tall poppy syndrome in Australia and other parts of the world where, and and and, and what it does is it makes people gun shy to take risks, and that is I think the essence of what makes America great is that ability that no matter what you've done in your life, how many mistakes you've made how little you have, what family you come from. If you want to work hard and put one foot in front of the other, Mm -hmm. you can succeed here, even to this day. In fact, more so now than ever. That's my belief. Yeah, I really agree with that. I love America. I'm very happy to be an American citizen. And it's a shitty country in many ways too, but it's the greatest country in the world. Yeah. The best bad option out there. (laughs) It's the best of the worst. Jordan, I cannot even begin to thank you enough for coming on this show. My pleasure. Probably one of the most entertaining, interesting, smart, Thank eccentric you. people I've ever blushing, met blushing. in my life. Thank you. Um, and I can't I wait se- to have dinner next that. week and have more stories. Thank you very much. Well, I, this, I think you guys are just getting started with this podcast, and obviously it's going to be wildly successful. So, 
Good Thank for you, you guys. And uh, before we go, you can follow Jordan at everything at either Wolf of Wall Street or Jordan Belford. Is anything Jordan Belford? Is it all Wolf of Wall Street? It's mostly Wolf of Wall Street. I should have put it as Jordan Belford, but I don't know. I was in a moment of weakness. I took the easy way. It's not Dude, easy. Wolf it's of a, Wall Street, people will never it's the forget. Same. It's the same thing. I mean, you it's know, it's great. the same thing. And Kelly Osborne, and of course, the, not the, but at Jeff Beecher. So thank you guys. Get it, get it, get it, you guys. Remember, what you call freaks, we call family. Everyone is welcome. And what's my saying, Kel? That was such a great ending. He had to have the last fucking word. You see, this is the problem. Kel, <laughs> that, you just this is ended. My, can I just tell no, you? No, no, this is it. Like, that's the perfect ending. It's like, <laughs> enough said. No, Freaks wait, are wait till you hear my line. Let's hear it. Jeff, Don't okay, beat cause... yourself up. Be, stay happy and healthy. No, her line's better. <laughs> <laughs> Don't beat you yourself up. Don't beat you yourself up. Because mine doesn't have guy's... my name in no, like, it. That's why. Like Kelly had this like inc- ultimate profound no, statement jo- like that listen, everyone's welcome end, here. Let me explain what don't beat you yourself up okay. means. Okay. Don't beat yourself up means don't go gamble all your money away. Don't drink 85 vodka Red Bulls. Don't, you don't have to eat two pizza pies every night. You don't have to do all this stuff because to hide your misery. Go deal with your problems. Don't become morbidly obese and 400 pounds and destroy your life three or four times till you get your shit fixed. Just start working on it now. So that's a good thing. Now have, Kelly needs to close with her line. <laughs> I just think that, I think it would be more inclusive if you said beat instead of beat show because otherwise it's just pertaining to you, Jeff. It's always about him though, But I it? will say, I, <laughs> <laughs> I do love the catchphrase. Thank you. Don't but be- I, I feel like we and should... You can get and, mer- and, and you, get be- and you can get beach your beer at any store near you. No, <laughs> no it's exclusively, exclusively, exclusively sold to Craig. It's it, exclusively sold to Craig's. You guys, seriously, we don't have a show without you. You are the reason why we do this. Thank you so much for your subscriptions. And thank you so much for all your comments. And thank you, Roosevelt Hotel. And the billboard outside. We love you guys.